It is Ryan here, and I have a question for you. What do you do when you win? Like, are you a fist pumper? A woohooer, a hand clapper, a high fiver. I kind of like the high five, but if you want to hone in on those winning moves, check out Chumba Casino. At chumbacasino.com, choose from hundreds of social casino style games for your chance to redeem serious cash prizes. There are new game releases weekly, plus free daily bonuses. So don't wait. Start having the most fun ever at chumbacasino.com. No purchase necessary. DTW, avoid report prohibited by law. See terms and conditions 18. Plus. <laughs> What is happening, everybody? I'm Larry Roberts. And I'm Sarah Lucy, and this is Branded, your comprehensive guide to creative branding. And on this episode of the podcast, we're going to talk about the famous question that each of us get asked whenever we go on a podcast that we all hate. I'm getting angry just thinking about it. I'm not going to lie. Well, Sarah, before you get into it, do me a favor. Tell us a little about yourself. I really don't want to. And I hate you for asking. (laughs) No, the uh, podcast hosts everywhere. When they bring a guest on their show, the first question that they always ask is, tell us about yourself, which I guess isn't even technically a question. And I hate that question so much. (laughs) It is the worst question to ask. It wastes so much time. Nobody ever answers it well. And it just makes the host sound super unprepared. Yeah. And it's one of those questions that are y- y- statements or commands, as I had mentioned. Never it uh, is. Mistakes. Yeah, it's a mistake. mistake. It's a mistake. There you go. <laughs> But it's one of those situations that puts you as the as the guest in a place that you don't even really know how to respond. Because you know, it, typically the host of the podcast is going to guide the conversation. They should typically have in mind the value proposition of having this particular guest on their podcast. So they need to ask questions that are going to drive that particular value proposition home as compared to having someone on your show and saying, tell us a little about yourself and you never know what you're going to get back. I have heard this question get answered so many ways and I rarely hear it done well. And I'm not, I'm even including myself in that because I've listened back to episodes I've been on and I'm just like, Oh God, like that wasn't great. Like I should have been more ready for that. And I've now I put like a lot of thought into how I would answer that. But there's so many times where the the guest just uses it as like, I'm going to go through my resume or here's everything I went through to get to this point. Like, here's where I was raised and I was raised by a single parent and I went to school here. Like, there's just so many ways you can answer that question and you're going to lose your audience. Your audience and your listeners, they're not there to hear the memoir of your guest. They're here to get value and to get information and to get stories and to connect. But when you open it just that vaguely, it's so hard to to, to direct that value. Well, I, I think as a podcast host, it kind of demonstrates a, a lack of professionalism, a lack of preparedness for the episode. And you know, I say lack of professionalism because I can think back to my first interview style podcast. And I used to ask this question all the time because Mm -hmm. I would get a guest. And typically at the time, I would also use a booking agency. So they would send me guests and I'd get a little one sheet or something that I might look at in preparation for the episode. But then I would literally literally, leave it up to the guest to really guide the conversation. And I was so bad at it that I would literally at times, and there's that word again, I'm going to say literally a lot this episode, but I would allow them to essentially have their own show just on my platform. And I would even tell them, this show's not even about me, it's about you. So you tell us all about you. It's such an, I'll just say amateur way to come about a conversation on a podcast because it demonstrates a lack of interest on my part a lack of professionalism on my part, a lack of preparedness on my part, uh, a a lack of understanding how to control a conversation. So there's definitely lessons in this, in this, and I hear you taking a deep breath and you're dying to get a word in edgewise. So jump in there because I just talk all the time. No, I, it's where the 
right now as we're recording this, it is your birthday. So it you is. can talk Yay. as much as you want. Yay. That is my gift to you. Oh, thanks. <laughs> um, but no, what I was going to say is I don't want this to sound like an attack or an insult to hosts that do this because it's almost it really is status quo at this point. Like every host does this that if you haven't taken the time to really think about like whether or not you should ask this question, you wouldn't even think not to because mm -hmm. it's so um, kind of natural to ask. So if anyone is a podcast host listening to this and they ask this question, this is not an insult. It's a wake up call. I just it want is. you to feel guilty. I want you to feel that guilt weighing down <laughs> on your shoulders. Thinking back when you listened to this episode of Brandon, you went, oh, they told me not to ask this question, and I did it anyway. So I want you to feel guilt. Well, moving <laughs> forward, yes, because now you know. But before this point, if you didn't know, you didn't think about it, it's not on you, but now you have no excuse. <laughs> so... Let's talk a little bit about how you should answer this question, because if you're going to be a guest on a podcast and that is something that we talk about a lot as a way to build a brand and a way to build a company, podcast guesting is an amazing marketing tool. But if you're going to be a guest, you should have an answer to this question prepared so that you don't make the mistakes that we constantly hear people make. Yeah, because as a as a guest, you don't even know where to go. And you had mentioned this earlier is it's such a wide open question that you kind of have to pick and choose what you're going to respond with. And typically, if you're being a guest on a podcast, you've got a message, you've got a story, you've got something that you want to share. So you have to be prepared for this conversation and take it in the direction that you want it to go. So you need to have a very focused response to this that drives home that value proposition that you're on these podcasts to demonstrate. And Sarah, I know you do a lot of coaching in this regard. So what are some of the things that guests can do to be better prepared for this wide open question? So I have kind of like a formula for answering this question, and it has three steps. Okay. So the goal of this question is really to set the stage for the conversation. And it's not to give your resume. It's not to give your life story. So the formula starts with introduce yourself. Um, if they haven't already done that, that's the most basic step of it. It's my name is, and I am then whatever your title is. So um, I'm Sarah Losi. I am the founder and president of favorite daughter media, super simple, concise. And then you want to introduce either your passion or the your expertise kind of give validity to why you're on this show. So in my case, I would say something like I have been producing podcasts for five years, and I'm really passionate about helping people use these tools to grow a business. Again, short and concise, but it, I gave an, a number of years, which shows like, okay, she's not new at this. And I tell you what I love doing. And then that third step is kind of giving a hint about what you're here to teach. So it puts the pressure back on the host to guide that conversation, but it introduces like, okay, this is what we're going to talk about. And it introduces it in a way of, this is what I'm an expert in. So you already gave your a little very brief background. And now this is what I'm an expert in. This is what we're going to talk about. Let's go. So how, how can we as guests, if the host isn't the most well-versed at interviewing, how can we answer this question in a way that drives the conversation forward and essentially sets the host up to ask the next logical question? I think it's about, it's that third step that like giving a hint at what you want to teach so that it kind of hits it back into their court and hopefully they'll take that softball and kind of run with it. And what I, this kind of becomes a fine line because as the guest, you want to be respectful of the host and this is their show. So you don't want it to seem like you're trying to take control of the conversation. So it gets super, super tricky. And no, I laugh because that's exactly what I end up doing when the, yes. when the host is just kind of sitting there. That's that's a platform for me to just take off. And now I've got my own show just with a different name. <laughs> yeah. And 
that might end up and like being a really great episode because if you kind of do it better than the host, like you're welcome. But also <laughs> that sucks for the host because then they kind of look dumb on their own show. <laughs> it's it's dumb. such a oh, it's, oh, it's such a challenge. It really is. So should we as host uh, as host as guests, should we just kind of suck it up and and not outshine the host if that opportunity presents itself should we reserve ourselves what should we do i mean you still want to present yourself the best way possible you still want to position yourself as an expert so it's really hard to not do that it's you just this all kind of comes down to choosing the shows you want to go on okay. if you're going to pitch yourself to be on a podcast you want to do research on that show and get the feel for the host. And when people are doing this, they kind of just pitch themselves based on who the audience is, the size of the show, things like that. But they don't really think about the host themselves. And if you can't picture yourself being friends with that host, if you can't picture yourself having just a conversation with them offline, the conversation in the episode isn't going to flow very well. Why are you laughing at me? I don't like this cat, but I'm going to go on the podcast <laughs> just to get some free press. Uh, I wouldn't Honestly, have coffee people with them. like <laughs> some, especially with some of the booking agencies out there, they have a quota. They have to get you on X number of shows. So they're just going to pitch you. Well, and if I think it's that's... a fit audience wise, go ahead, I guess. Yeah, well, I think that's a great point that you're making there because a lot of people do use booking agencies to get on podcasts to grow their brand. And while there are definitely some good booking agencies out there, uh, this is a scenario that you're going to run into more often probably than not when you're going on these newer shows with less experienced hosts. So this is a scenario while we're painting it as, as something that, that, happens all the time it really does happen all the time and you yeah. really do need to be prepared for it uh, again especially as you're starting to leverage podcasts to grow your brand so after we answered that question where can we take it from there because odds are you're, you're going to get back another very open-ended very uh, uh just unfocused question for you to continue the conversation so how can we be prepared to follow up the tell us a little something about yourself question to take the next step in the conversation? So when I pitch myself to a podcast or I pitch a client to a podcast, I usually pitch it with a list of like the key takeaways or the talking points. So the host knows exactly what that guest is bringing to the table. Even if that's not the way you pitch or even if you didn't have to pitch because you know the person or you met them at an event and they're like, oh, come on my show. You should have that outline for yourself of this is my topic. I want to hit on these three key points because those are going to be what's valuable to the listener. And having that can help you because if you feel the conversation kind of going off the rails, you can grab onto one of those key pieces of value and kind of tie it in so that it goes back to the focus, if that makes sense. Yeah, hundred uh, percent. And and <laughs> there's another crutch phrase that I use in podcasting. hundred percent. Yeah. 100%. <laughs> I totally agree. What so, was the uh, one that in the first like three episodes, all I ever said was like, absolutely or something. Uh, yeah. I think it was absolutely. Absolutely. I, I've, I've gotten absolutely. away from it. Thankfully and, you called me out trying. on it. I'm trying to get away from 100% because I had somebody point it out to me the other day. They go, I think you were the first person I ever heard say 100%. And then I started hearing it everywhere. So it's not that I coined the phrase in any way, shape, fashion, yeah. or form. But I use it so much that other people that hang out with me or talk to me start to recognize it in other conversations and go, oh, that's Larry's crutch phrase there. So be oh. aware of that whenever you're going on <laughs> podcast too. You know, that, that whole question of tell us a little about yourself, that's a crutch phrase. It's a crutch question. So take some time to look at yourself and ask yourself, what are some of my crutch phrases? What are some of my crutch questions? And be able to redirect your responses in a way that don't rely on those crutch phrases. Do you have any input for us there? I think just oh, really. Oh, I was really hoping you'd say absolutely. 
Oh, I'm sorry. I 100% dropped the ball on that. <laughs> <laughs> I was really looking for an absolutely oh. there. Well, you absolutely didn't get one. I absolutely did not. <laughs> Happy birthday to me. I want to ask you this question. You asked it to me, and I gave a little bit of an example when I was walking through the formula. But if I were to say to you on a podcast, tell me about yourself with kind of the formula I laid out in mind and knowing that this question is terrible, how would you answer it? It really depends on the show that I'm on and my purpose for being on the show. Uh, I would definitely give a high level overview of my background, but then I would intentionally steer that conversation and that response back to my reason for being there. If I'm being bought, brought on a podcast to talk about branding, then I'm going to redirect that question in a way that reinforces my branding story. You know, mm -hmm. where did the red hat come from? So I'm going to tell the, the backstory there. If I wanted to talk about how I got into podcasting, I'm going to go back to that point in time, way back in 2014 when I first bought that microphone and did a podcast. So that's how I'm going to steer the conversation. So I'll give a high level overview, but then redirect it back to the purpose of me being on the show so that I continue to drive forward that value proposition. And I say that because I, especially when we're going on podcasts to build a brand. We're there for a reason. We have a goal in mind, and that's growing our business, growing our brand, growing our influence, and growing our audience. So if you get asked that question, have a very focused response. Understand why you're there, what the show is that you're on. Is it a business show? Is it a comedy show? What type of podcast are you on right now? And respond accordingly based on that particular audience and your reason for being on the podcast. So that's how I typically do it. That's it. You made a really great point there that I didn't even mention when I was going through my formula. It's this answer does not have to be the same every time. In fact, it shouldn't be the same every time. It's just like when you're applying for jobs and you still alter your resume and your cover letter based on exactly what you're applying for. So you can have different ways of answering this question based on what the show is. And like for me, I go on different types of shows talking about different types of things like other, like so many people do. So like you said, I can go on a show to talk about branding. I could go on it to talk about podcast guesting. I've gone on shows just to talk about me. Like there's some shows that they didn't ask me anything professionally. They're just like, let's talk about you. And I'm like, awesome. I, I can do that. Yeah. So the way that you answer that question will vary based on the goals of that show and that episode but you still want to make sure that you're hitting those key points. You want to introduce yourself. You want to establish your expertise and introduce what you're there to talk about. And that whole like answer shouldn't take more than like a minute. I've had, I've listened to podcasts where people spend the first like five or six minutes of the show answering this question. And I am asleep at the wheel. <laughs> well, it I think is... that's what the hosts depend on that. That's why they ask the question because they don't have the skill set yet typically to steer the conversation in a way that's going to provide value. So they use that crutch and look at the guest to do that. And in the case of like, they're just kind of doing it because it's status quo. What, like, what would you recommend doing instead? Like how can people get away from, so tell us about yourself. Well, you prepare for the interview, for starters. You have an understanding of the background of the individual you're having on the podcast. So as the host, that's where we have to do our homework. We have to understand why they're on the podcast. What are their goals for being on the podcast? Because many times, too, and this is why I quit my interview podcast, was because it was a one-way street. The guest was coming on the podcast to drive their brand, drive their book, drive their business. And here I was left after the interview just with this content that now I have to produce, that I have to publish, that I have to market. And there was no relationship there between me and the guest. There was no mutual value proposition here. So understand as a host that you want to provide value for that guest, but you also want that guest to provide value for your audience. And the only way you're going to know how to have that guest provide value for your audience is to know their background. And as an interviewer, be able to steer that conversation in a way that your guest is going to answer the questions that respond directly to your specific audience. Does that make sense? It does. And I think the 
formula that I use as a guest to answer this can actually be used in reverse as the host. So if I were to introduce you on a show, I can go right through that same formula, but for you. So that keeps me in control of the direction of the show while still giving the type of introduction that would be useful. So like, I'm so excited to have Larry Roberts of Red Hat Media on the show. He has been speaking on AI and ChatGPT on stages all over the country. And I'm so excited that he is here to talk to us about how we can use AI tools to grow our brand. So that did the introduce who you are, introduce your expertise and introduce your topic. Very concise. It gave you the like reassurance that, okay, this host knows who I am. And it just starts off the conversation on what the value is versus how do we get fr- like out of you telling your whole backstory. No, you're exactly right. And again, it's it's a dance. You know, we we both have to dance together. You as the host, you're going to be leading the dance, but you have to guide your entire show across the dance floor. It's up to both parties, but you as the host, you're the number one, you're the leader. You know, you're the the yin, you're the direction of the yin and the yang of this conversation, and it requires us to come in prepared. So I think the biggest message that I have from this particular episode is to make sure you go into it. If you're a podcast host, be sure you go into it with a direction in mind that you understand who your guest is and what that value proposition is and how you're going to guide the conversation to deliver that value proposition. And when you have that direction established, make sure that you and the guest have talked about it because I've seen it also where someone comes on the show and they're like, oh, that's what I'm talking about. (laughs) So this is something that you do want to plan in advance, which is why it's what I include when I pitch. But if someone, if a, a host pitches me to be on their show, I make sure I say, okay, let me know exactly what you want me to talk about and how I can bring the most value. So think about this when you're on the show, but also think about this before you ever get on it. Make sure you and the host or you and your guests are exactly on the same page with what you want to talk about, what value you want to give your audience, and you know who each other is enough that you could do the introduction for them. 100%. And I said that on purpose. (laughs) Absolutely. Now, before we wrap this one up, would you go through those three steps for us one more time, Sarah? So the formula for answering tell us about yourself is introduce yourself, introduce your passion or why you're an expert in your topic, and then give a hint at what it is you're going to be talking about on that episode. Perfect. And with that, hopefully you got some value out of this particular episode because we tried to maintain a direct focus and make sure that we guided this conversation in the direction that we needed it to go to provide you with some value. And if you did find some value, do us a favor right now and smash that subscribe button on your favorite podcast platform so we can continue to bring you this amazing content. And with that, I'm Larry Roberts. I'm Sarah Losey. We'll talk to you next week. With the Lucky Land Slots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. This is your captain speaking. Uh, we've got clear runway and the weather's fine, but we're just going to circle up here a while and uh, get lucky. No, no, nothing like that. It's just these cash prizes add up quick. So I suggest you sit back, keep your tray table upright, and start getting lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandSlots.com. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details.